A Beechcraft Bonanza lifts off from Beeville, Texas, a simple midday flight. Four minutes later, it's gone. A doorbell camera captures its final moments, the aircraft descending through sheets of rain, the engine still roaring, then silence. Now the NTSB's preliminary report reveals shocking new details about what may have led to that fatal right-hand turn and how in under 300 seconds, a short local flight turned into tragedy. Let's start with what we know for sure. On October 7, 2025, a Beechcraft A35 Bonanza tail number, November 577, Bravo departed from Beeville Municipal Airport in South Texas. The pilot was Hendrick Jacobus Kruger, 44 years old from Rockport, Texas. A private pilot rated for single-engine land airplanes, but not instrument rated. He was also the registered owner of the aircraft. This flight wasn't commercial or instructional, just a personal Part 91 trip, something thousands of general aviation pilots do every day. At 12.19 p.m., Kruger took off from runway 12. ADSB data shows he climbed to around 1,600 feet MSL, that's roughly 1,300 feet above ground level, before beginning a right-hand turn. Within four minutes of takeoff, the aircraft began descending rapidly, and at 12.23, it impacted open terrain near Skidmore, Texas, about three nautical miles southeast of the airport. No distress call. No radio communication, just four minutes from liftoff to impact. Now the airplane itself, the Beechcraft A-35 Bonanza, is a legend among vintage general aviation aircraft. Agile, responsive, fast for its class, and famous for its V-tail design, though this particular A-35 is one of the early straight tail models. These airplanes can feel lively on the controls, and in experienced hands they're a joy to fly, but their responsiveness can also punish small mistakes, especially in marginal visibility. Being a post-war design, every A-35 flying today has its own quirks. Control harmony can vary a bit depending on rigging and maintenance, but there's no sign the aircraft itself failed here. The preliminary NTSB report found no evidence of mechanical malfunction before impact. So what went wrong in those four minutes? To understand that we have to look beyond the airplane and into the sky it flew into. Here's where things get interesting. At first glance, weather didn't seem like a deal-breaker. The Beeville Medar, near the time of the crash, read 10 miles visibility scattered clouds at 2,500 feet broken at 12,000 winds, 13 gusting 22 from the southeast. That looks like perfectly normal VFR weather. But the thing about Texas weather, especially in early fall, is that it can turn ugly fast. Local law enforcement told investigators that multiple vehicle accidents happened around that same time in the same area because of heavy rain and near-zero visibility. So while the Matar looked fine, localized convective cells essentially sudden downpours or microbursts likely rolled through just minutes after the report. If you've ever seen one of those Texas rain shafts in the distance, you know how deceptive they are. It can look clear one minute, then the world turns gray the next. For a non-instrument rated pilot, that's a nightmare scenario. You lose the horizon, the windshield fills with rain, and suddenly your body, your sense of balance starts lying to you. That doorbell camera video confirmed the Bonanza was intact with the engine running as it descended. That's not the picture of a structural or engine failure. It's more consistent with a pilot who simply lost outside visual reference and became trapped in a disorienting descent. It's a chilling reminder that good weather on paper doesn't always mean safe weather in reality. Conditions can change within a few miles, and even a brief patch of instrument conditions can overwhelm someone not trained for it. In just seconds, what looked like a harmless rain shower may have become a deadly trap, setting the stage for what the NTSB called a descending right turn that would soon become fatal. When investigators reached the crash site near Skidmore, they found a wreckage field stretching roughly 1,200 feet oriented toward 280 degrees. That's a long path and it tells us something right away. This was a high energy impact. The aircraft wasn't tumbling out of the sky, it was moving forward with speed and power when it hit. The left wing was largely intact and came to rest beneath the fuselage while the right wing was shattered across the debris trail. The pattern fits a descending banked impact like the airplane struck while still in a turn. Importantly, there was no sign of an in-flight breakup. The Bonanza came down as one piece. The engine and propeller backed that up. Both prop blades showed deep twisting and leading edge gouging classic marks of power at impact. One magneto had broken off another wasn't found, but that's consistent with the violence of the crash, not necessarily a pre-impact failure. Investigators could still rotate the engine by hand, valves and cylinders moved freely showing no internal seizure. And the flight controls, all cables were continuous from tail to cockpit. 
the bell cranks were fractured by impact loads, not corrosion or fatigue. In other words, the airplane was controllable up until the very end. No fire, no explosion, just raw kinetic energy. When you line up all that evidence, powered engine intact controls, no breakup. It paints a pretty clear picture. This wasn't a mechanical failure or a sudden stall. The Bonanza was likely still being flown under power when it struck the ground. The question becomes, why was it descending? To piece that together, let's reconstruct those final minutes. ADSB data shows the Bonanza climbing to about 1600 feet MSL after takeoff. Then almost immediately the aircraft began a descending right-hand turn that continued until impact. Combine that with witness video airplane intact engine running and a probable scenario starts to emerge. Most likely Kruger flew into heavy rain or a low visibility patch just after departure. Without a clear horizon the inner ear takes over and that's when spatial disorientation hits. The human vestibular system simply isn't built to sense rotation without visual cues. In a gentle sustained turn your body quickly feels level even when you're banking. You stop correcting the turn tightens, and before you realize it you're descending fast in what pilots call a graveyard spiral. Now add the Bonanza's control response to that equation. It's a slippery high performance single if you let the bank angle increase just a bit. Airspeed builds rapidly. Pulling back on the yoke to fix the descent only tightens the spiral. And at just over a thousand feet above the ground, there's no time to recover. For a pilot trained only under VFR partial panel or blind flying is almost impossible without instruments. Kruger had no instrument rating, and at that altitude, there's no margin for trial and error. The airplane was healthy, the engine was alive, but the environment stripped away his references, and that's all it takes. This kind of accident isn't rare, unfortunately. VFR into IMC remains one of the deadliest traps in general aviation, more than engine failures, more than mechanical defects. And it's never about recklessness, it's usually about decision momentum. Once you're airborne and the weather changes faster than expected, every option feels bad. Turning back means giving up. Climbing means going blind. Pressing on feels like the least worst choice. Until it isn't. The takeaway here isn't blame, it's empathy. Any of us who've flown small airplanes in unpredictable weather know how fast comfort can turn into confusion. Kruger's final moments were likely filled with effort, not negligence. So where does that leave us? Here's what the preliminary evidence actually tells us. The airplane was airworthy, the engine had power, the controls were intact, the pilot, however, was flying without an instrument rating in an area hit by sudden localized downpours. The descent was rapid, consistent, and tragically unrecoverable. But there's still a lot we don't know. The NTSB will dig deeper into the pilot's total hours, his recent flying experience, his health, and any fatigue or medication factors. They'll look at maintenance records for November 577 Bravo and analyze high-resolution weather radar to pinpoint exactly how intense that rain cell was. And they'll match radar ADSB and witness video to verify the precise attitude and rate of descent in the final seconds. Until the final report comes out, all we can do is interpret the facts we have and use them to learn. Because the lesson here is brutally simple, Weather doesn't care how short your flight is. Always check for convective activity nearby. Always plan an out before you roll down the runway. And if you're a VFR pilot, invest time in basic instrument skills. They're not just for IFR flight, they're your lifeline when visibility disappears. Every loss like this one hurts, but each holds a lesson that might save someone else. That's why we talk about them with respect, not speculation. The loss of Hendrik Kruger reminds us that even a routine flight can turn deadly when weather changes faster than our senses can keep up. The Beechcraft didn't fail him nature and perception did. We'll wait for the NTSB's final report before drawing any firm conclusions, but this preliminary data already gives us something to think about humility, because flying safely isn't about ego, it's about respecting the limits of both the machine and ourselves. If you found this analysis helpful, hit like and subscribe, I'll cover the final findings once they're out. Until then, fly smart, stay cautious, and always, always have an escape plan.